So bless you. Get into Esther. We're reading 6 through the end, 6 through 10. There's 6, six through 10 is very small chapters, so it's not as much as even last night. Last night, if you want to go back to it, you can hear the beginning is the whole introduction of what Esther is all about, where she came from, how God chose her, her position, her her dependence on God, um, her putting herself out there knowing she could have been killed, but God used her at such a point, and then the favor of the, of the Lord through the king with his scepter, and... Um, and then also the way that God turned it around and brought justice and truth to what was truly happening, the motive of Haman's heart. God showed the truth. And then, um, so we're going to get into the rest of it. So ready? Praise the Lord. I think I'm giving some of it away. I don't want to. So let's get into day. Esther, Numbers chapter 6. That night, the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. Now the Lord did this. It was found written that Mordecai, Esther's uncle, had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hands on King Osasuerus. The king said, what honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. See, God knows the timing to show forth the truth of what and give you even that, um, that reward, you know. So the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court. This is so cool how God can make it work so perfectly, the timing. So, uh, Evil Haman had just entered the court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Now he was at his family's house and he just had told them, last night we read this, that, oh, you know, I've been the one selected to come to the banquet of the king and queen. The queen wanted me. And then, and then he also made a plan that he was going to, uh, well, he made gallows to, to hang Mordecai because Mordecai wouldn't bow to him and he was Jewish and he wanted to take all the Jewish people out. Now, at the same time, the king couldn't sleep that night, so he had the, the scrolls read to him and he asked if Mordecai was, was, and Mordecai had saved, had protected the king had let everybody know that the king was in danger of his life and because he overheard. And so uh, the king said, okay, was he ever, you know, was there anything given to him? And they said, no. So now the king in his heart wants to bless Mordecai, but Haman is wanting to hang Mordecai and it's for two different reasons. So praise God. Verse five, the king's servant said to him, Haman is there standing in the court, and the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king asked him, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, whom would the king delight to honor more than me? So he's already selfish, already thinking of himself. And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the, the king delights to honor let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn and a horse on which the king is ridden which has a royal crest placed on his head then let this robe and horse be delivered in the hand of the one of king's most noble princes that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor then the king said to Haman, Hurry, take the robe and the horse as you've suggested, and do so for Mordecai, the Jew who sits within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone, all, all that you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. 
But Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with his head covered. When Haman told his wife and all his friends everything that had happened to him, wise men and his wife said to him, If Mordecai before, before whom you have begun to fall is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely fall before him. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet, which Esther had prepared. So all this, God knows the timing. God knows the timing. He sets it all up. Every, everything happened at the same time. And watch this, chapter 7. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day, as the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition? Queen Esther, it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Up to half the kingdom it shall be done. Then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. So King Ahasuerus answered and said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, Will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now Horbana, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath subsided. Look at how God is right on time. He will take care of you. He is right on time. He'll. This is such an awesome story. So chapter 8. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. Now she tells the, you know, who she is. So the king took off his best, or his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, and implored him with tears to counteract the evil of Haman, the Agiite, and the scheme which he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. God did that twice with her. And said, if it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agiite, which he wrote to annihilate the Jews who are in the king's providences. For how can I endure to see the evil that will come to my people? How can I endure to see the destruction of my countermen, countrymen? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, Indeed, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows because he tried to lay his hands on the Jews. You yourselves write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring. There's the favor of the Lord right there. For whatever is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring no one can revoke 
So the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month, which is the month of Sivan, on the 23rd day, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, the princes of the providence, from in India to Ethiopia, 127 providences in all, to every pro providence in his own script, to every people in his own language, and to the Jews in their own script and language. And he wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus, sealed it with the king's signet ring, and sent letters by couriers on horseback, riding on royal horses bred from swift steads. By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or providence that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. So basically, so they could protect themselves. Because when the when there was something made with the with the um the law it had to be left alone but they could make another law that would that would um counteract and so they were able to fight for themselves on one day all the providences of king ahasuerus on the on one day in all the providences of King Ahasuerus on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, a copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every providence and published for all the people. So the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers who rode on royal horses went out, hastened and pressed on by the king's command and the decree was issued in Shushan, the citadel. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Sushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor. And in every providence and city where the king's command decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because fear of the Jews fell upon them. Praise the Lord. Now, in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, in the thirteenth day, the time came. So see, a lot of people became Jews because of the fear of God. In the twelfth month, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred. Hallelujah. In that... The Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. They were allowed to fight for themselves. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the providence of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all the people. And all the officials of the providences, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's palace and his fame spread throughout all the providence. God lifted him up to be second in, in charge as Haman was. Evil Haman fell, was hanged on his own gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. And look at Mordecai's in this position now. And he became famous, spread through all the providences. For this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent. He was a godly man. That's the difference. Thus, the Jews, when there's love, there's love, there's joy, there's peace, there's goodness. That's when the people rejoice. When the king is good, the people rejoice. Thus, the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Sushan, the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. So we just thank you, Lord, for this right now. That you'll do this. You'll bless those who, who hate God and his righteous ways to be executed by those who love God. They will be executed out of, out of the, 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 the leadership of where they're at. That they will be pulled out of leadership. They will be pulled down. And godly laws will rule and reign in America, we claim. Also, um, the ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, they killed all, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. On that day, the 
number of those who were killed in Sushan, the citadel, was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed five hundred men in Sushan, the citadel, and ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's providence? Now what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. Then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Sushan to do again tomorrow according to today's degree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on gallows. That's the way we do it. Praise God with the righteousness hand of God. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Sushan and they hanged Haman's ten sons. You take out all the enemy. And did you notice that they, they took them out and they did not even take their plunder? Because sometimes when the Lord tells you, you know, there sometimes the plunder has to do with like like it's attached to them and you don't want anything to do with it. There's times to take take what God has told us to take, but then there's time to let it all go and they didn't even take the plunder because they were connected to it. So anyway, so the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued Sushan, in Sushan, they hanged Haman's ten sons, and the Jews who were in Sushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar and killed 300 men of Sushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews, that's the second time I've read that, the remainder of the Jews in the king's providence gathered together and protected their lives and rest from their enemies and killed 75,000 of their enemies but they did not lay hands on their plunder. That's the third time I've read that. They did not lay hands on their plunder. And this, it, this was on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Now, verse 18, chapter 9, verse 18. Okay, I'm going to underline all these things. But the Jews who were at Sushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th and on the 15th of the month. They rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Here again, they're saying it again. They made it a gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the village who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. That's where we get Christmas. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the providence of King Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rested from their enemies as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy, the month that was turned from sorrow to joy, the, sor the day they were going to be killed to the day they were able to, the month they were able to, you know, to uh, combat the enemy, basically. For the, and from morning to a holiday. They came from morning to a holiday. You know, just as a holiday is. A holiday is a day of feasting, of joy, of laughter, of family and friends. That they should make days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. That reminds me of Christmas. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun as Mordecai had written to them because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast pure, that is the lot, pure, P-U-R, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on his own head and that he and his sons would be hanged on the gallows. So they called these days Purim. So he built his own gallows and they and he was wound up he wound up being the one hung on him along with his sons. So they called these days Purim after the name Pure. Therefore because of all the words of this letter that they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year according to the written instruction, according to the prescribed time. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation 
every family, every providence, every city, that these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews and that the memory of them should not perish among the descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, with Mordecai, the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews and to 127 providences of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them and as they decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in the book. In chapter 10, and King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of his power and his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of the Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus and was great among the Jews and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. So we just thank you, Lord, right now as we're ending Esther, that we speak peace to our country, we speak good to, for the people, and we speak peace to the country. We thank you, Father, that we will be received. Godly people will be who are in control, who will be put in control, who will be put in leadership, will be received by the multitude because the multitude wants godliness and righteousness. We thank you, Father, even tonight as I listen to the words that they spoke at this um, care net that most people want righteousness and godliness. They don't want abortions. They don't want people to even go more than a week, a couple weeks and have an abortion. They don't want it. Most people want righteousness. So Lord, we just speak the good of your people and we speak peace to the countrymen. And I pray for every country and city and town and in our nation of America, that you will raise up Ameri people, Lord, even in other countries too, that you will raise up people in every area to bring peace and life, to, to take authority over the demonic darkness and to bring peace and light into the atmosphere and love in Jesus into the atmosphere to bring prosperity, godly prosperity, because that's where people will succeed Families will grow and endure. Children and babies will be brought forth into godly homes. Marriages that are healed and whole and healthy because the enemy will not be able to lie to them. They will recognize the lie of the enemy. And Father, I rebuke every lie of the enemy. There's lies of the enemy always going on. I mean, sometimes I get lies of the enemy and I say, no, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I have to out loud say, I take the word, the sword of the spirit, and, and I rebuke you. And I find a scripture, if it pertains to a marriage, that my husband is the godly man of our home. And he knows and directs and decides. And he leads because the Holy Spirit leads him. So I trust him because he's leading us. Or if it's a financial thing, by God, by God. By uh, you, my God, he will supply all my need according to his riches and glory. If it's a health thing, um, he has healed me and I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. There's so many scriptures for every situation. So Lord, we just thank you for relationships. Love one another. The love of God inside of us that, that there's love for one another. God, we just praise you and thank you that you've given us your word. You've given us life. And we just speak life into every town, into every county, into every city and county and town. And we just thank you, Father. In every providence, we bring life. And just as they got to send out those letters, Esther and Mordecai got to send letters out saying that they're going to now have a day of Purim, a two-day thing of Purim where it's going to be a celebration. It's going to be a day of giving gifts, a day of resting, a day of, of feasting 
Father God, we just thank you, Father. That's why Christmas is so exciting when we're when we enter into Christmas time, it's so exciting and it's September right now. So we're getting into the harvest time. We're getting into Thanksgiving and and the Christmas festivities and the lights and the beauty and the smiles and the joy and the and the excite the tambourine and the the dance and the the fun Christmas carols. Lord, we just thank you. That all is from you. And just as they sent out letters saying that the day of Purim is going to be is celebrated every year from now on. God, that was a celebration. And thank you, Lord, that you took and you blessed the Jew, the Jews and they were able to fight for themselves and take out the enemy and defeat the enemy. The enemy wasn't able to defeat them, but they were able to defeat the enemy. And we thank you for the favor that you gave Mordecai and Esther through the king and that the king saw the truth and that Esther fasted and prayed and waited for that right timing. God, you have all this in for us. And we are so thankful for the Holy Spirit, for leading us by your spirit, for prayer, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can follow you hard after you. We can, we can love one another. We can prepare ourselves for for our king for to be beautiful you know if we if we find if we find honor in your sight that you will bring you will heal us you will you will give us everything we desire if we find honor in your sight and what is that but if we forgive those who have hurt us if we forgive then you will forgive us and you will give to us and we just thank you father right now for this work this word to us and we thank you for your for your for the time that we have right now that we can settle in our heart and in our mind we are going to speak life we are going to give life we're going to pray life we're going to be a person of peace bringing life into the atmosphere and we thank you for raising up all those people lord in the towns and cities and providences everywhere to bring light to bring truth to to push away the darkness and bring prosperity into their towns and cities, for marriages to be blessed, babies to be brought forth, and, and lives to be established in the kingdom of light. And we thank you for blessing CareNet, Lord, and for it to go forward and establish many every area that we can possibly establish and bring more girls into the things that God would have which is to have their baby. And we thank you, Lord, no more abortions because people won't want abortions anymore. No more abortionists because there won't be a need for it. And they will close down because people won't want them. And we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So remember, your words are your way to victory. I will see you tomorrow on Fortunate.